I haven't spoken about this meme being pushed by a certain segment of the right wing to manifest zero seats for the Conservative Party at the upcoming general election because I'm conflicted about it. I don't know if it's the right thing to do and I'll talk about that at the end. So please stick around and I'll, I want to solicit your advice on it and I'll explain myself. But first, let me talk about the meme itself and explain it to you. I first became aware of it when an obese Middle Eastern guy went on GB News and spoke to Jacob Rees-Mogg. Uh, if I may be frank, uh, Jacob, one of the issues is that nominally conservative institutions such as the Tory party refuse to play friend enemy. They routinely throw people who should be their friends under the bus and end up bowing to the enemy. Uh, there's one Tory MP, I'm not going to kind of name her, but let's just say it's a, a rising Cameronite star. She spent her entire career advocating for gender equality, trans rights, every social justice issue under the sun. Uh, I'm sure the audience of this show understands economics. As far as I can see, this person, this MP I'm talking about, is simply responding to incentives, reward and punishment mechanisms. And many people feel that it's the failure of the Conservative Party to wield power for friends and against enemies while in office, um, which is why a lot of people are saying they deserve zero seats in the upcoming election. Because well, we, I, I, uh, you know. I think you make a very interesting point about how people... Yeah, I think you make a very interesting point about why I should also not even have a seat. Anyway, this is the argument that there is extreme discontentment with the Tory base for its own party, its own voter base, feels betrayed by them. The next time I saw it being discussed was on the Lotus Eaters. Yeah, we're here. I'm doing a meme. Why not? Let's, let's just do that. Good. Meme, meme today, zero seats. I didn't make this. Uh, a rat I saw on Twitter made this meme. Yes. Very good rat. We'll get back to By the way, I don't know who this appeals to. I tend to think the only thing that Carl Benjamin got right when he set up this thing is the lighting, which is impeccable. But look, who am I to judge if you like it? To him later. But let's uh, let's get to what this is. Now, you may remember or may recall there's a Twitter account called Stats for Lefties, which um, is infected with idiocy, but that's a whole other problem. But the stats bit is pretty cool. And as you can see here, the Conservatives were doing really, really, really bad and still are in the polling. And so they did some analysis of what the country would look like if it was ran off these various polls. So they did the YouGov one, for example. And they found that the Conservative Party would get 11 seats if the election was held under those conditions of the most recent YouGov poll there. And um, still 11 too many, but I like where it's going. Yeah, that is... Minus three six one. <laughs> that is extermination <laughs> on a political level. So not only is there extreme discontentment with the Tory base, who probably won't turn out, um, but there is polling suggesting an utter wiping out of the Conservative Party at the next election. Now this is an extreme poll, of course, suggesting eleven seats, like as a worst case scenario, probably. Um, but the meme therefore comes, well, let's get it down to zero. Let's make that zero. They deserve nothing. So not only is there extreme discontentment, it's a plausible scenario too. Now, um, this has now uh, culminated in a... AI-generated party political broadcast. I have to tell you that this is altered content and is AI-generated. Okay, but it's culminated in this as a, a, a faux Conservative Party political uh, broadcast. For 200 years, the Conservative and Unionist Party of the United Kingdom has bravely and consistently betrayed not only its own voter base, but all native peoples of the British Isles. From constitutional reforms to dissolving the British Empire, from desecration of tradition to importing endless migrants, it is the Conservative Party that has been on the forefront of the destruction of this ancient people and their lands. I am immensely proud of what we have managed to achieve as a party, taking the greatest empire to ever span the face of the earth 
to being a pathetic, miserable and broken nation mocked the world over. In recent years, we have greatly accelerated our plans to crush the ethnic Britons, making sure we openly show our hatred to you at every turn. And let me be clear, we do hate you. We despise you. We have not done enough, though. Despite all of our betrayal, our blatant loathing of you, you still vote for us. Even as we refuse to simply deliver a referendum, and then when we do, we subvert your wishes by then opening our borders to the world, even as we take all of your wealth and make the promised public services completely unusable, there are still some of you who vote for us. It is you, our voters, who we find the most disgusting. To combat this, I am incredibly proud to introduce our new policy, Zero Seats. Zero Seats is the policy where we shall do everything possible to make sure at the next general election, we as a party obtain zero seats. You will have already seen zero seats in action, such as arguing over how much of your money to send to foreign conflicts that are nothing to do with you, or straight up making you homeless as we lavishly treat foreign peoples and hand over your property to them, and then criminally punishing you if you so much as point any of this out. So please, when you think about the next election, think zero seats. If we all play our part, we can finally make zero seats a reality. Okay, so again, to comply with YouTube Terms of Service, I want to let you know that was altered content and a faux political broadcast, a fake, just so that you're absolutely clear. Now, look, here. here's the guy pushing it again. It's academic agent, obviously, explaining a, a, a little bit more about the idea behind it and the discontentment with the Conservative Party. They, the system has basically spent the last decade trying to get back to this moment where it was, where it was, you know, the neoliberal consensus of 2010. The problem is, is that in the 14 years in between, things aren't like they were in 2010. I remember 2010. It was a much better time than it is now. We have endured 14 years are probably the worst government in the history of this country and that is saying something considering some of the governments we've had um the state of the country is just absolutely appalling i mean i'm talking everything nothing works uh nhs might as well be dismantled at this point it just doesn't work potholes in the road fucking traffic everywhere queues you know uh boarded up buildings pubs closing down things getting more expensive you know cars are really expensive to run now um you know uh, people struggling to get jobs coming out of university you know wages haven't increased and on top of that they keep on importing more and more and more people Re you know immigration like we've never seen before Anyway, you get the idea. But look, um, I am conflicted about this entire thing. Not only because it's being pushed by people like this, who have extreme questionable positions themselves about various issues, and who I'm just suspicious about, and the, the constituency of like his followers and stuff like that. But... I want you to explain to me, okay, in the aftermath of a complete wipeout for the Tory party, how the ashes will be put together in our favour. If you can, pl somebody please explain it to me, like I'm stupid, how we benefit from this. Won't that scenario play out worse for us? Won't, th in, in the aftermath, of a total wipeout of the Conservative Party, it be viewed as an endorsement of left-wingerism, or whatever. Won't it be seen as an utter rejection of the right wing? How are we going to put the pieces back together in the aftermath? Uh, how is somebody going to make the argument that a, a, a Labour landslide actually means that what people wanted was more right-wing policies. I just don't get it. So I don't know if this is the right thing 
to do or not. And I'm constantly reminded by um, Colin Liddell's thing where he posted that the very fine balancing act of the dissident to do, I'm paraphrasing here, I'm probably going to get it all muddled up, but he, he once implored that the very fine balancing act that the dissident has to do is to criticise his own society and government without without becoming a third column for a foreign power and and i'm i'm really suspicious about this entire campaign to wipe out the tory base and to disillusion the conservative party to the point that they allow their own party to be totally wiped out totally gutted because i feel like that is a catch 22 scenario where in the aftermath of that it will be assumed that that was a total and final rejection of Toryism, of, of conservatism and the right wing entirely. It will be seen as the right wing suffering an utter defeat. And I just don't see how we put those pieces back together to make the argument that no. What the electorate was actually saying when they were voting for 600 Labour seats is that they wanted a more right wing government. I just don't see it. So please, somebody explain this to me if you can. If I, I really need your help in this. In any case, I don't think this is getting much traction, mainly because it's being pushed by a bunch of like millennial and gen x weirdos now and i just want to end right. that with a nice zero seats gentlemen that's all yes. well, we're not doing the oh yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. zero seats 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 mm -hmm. i mean this is a really weird bunch of nerds i've got to say so um I, I don't know what the chances are of this meme gaining much traction. Um, I mean, I mean, this guy on the left here, it's just worth saying, he is so out of touch, he believes that the average salary from his ivory tower, he believes the average salary in the UK is £50,000, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, so... Some of these people are so really out of touch and it's a bunch of really uh, suspicious, weird, nerdy people. Here's another meme. But because the Tories are widely and correctly perceived to be traitors who live to appease the left while showing open contempt for their own voter base. Zero seats is not gaining support because anyone likes Labour, but because everyone hates the Tories. The by-election result in Wellington... So again, what I have to say to this is how in the aftermath of a wipeout for the Conservative Party will the case be made that what the electorate wanted was actually more of the right wing, not the left? How will it not be seen as an as an utter rejection of the right wing? Help me out. Okay, that's been it. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.